Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us this week. We are continuing with our year-long Bible journey. You will find out exactly what we'll be talking about in our story, but for right now, let's stand up and worship God together. Habakkuk, the prophet, prayed to God. How long, O Lord, he prayed. How long will I cry to you for help and you do not hear me? Habakkuk had told God about all the violence that was happening in Judah, but nothing seemed to change. Why do you let bad things happen? People are fighting and stealing. The bad guys always win, Habakkuk said. God was listening. He knew what was happening. God answered, watch, I am doing something amazing, something you wouldn't believe if I told you. Then God told Habakkuk what was going to happen. God was raising up enemies, the mighty Babylonians. No one could stand in their way. Their army would be strong and fast like hungry eagles that swoop from the sky to catch little mice in a field. The Babylonians were going to come and make God's people prisoners. Would this really happen? Habakkuk wanted the evil in Judah to stop, but the people of Babylon were evil too. Why do it this way, Lord? Habakkuk asked. God answered, 
I'm going to show you what will happen. Be patient and wait for it. If you are righteous, you will live by faith. It may seem like evil people are winning now, but they won't win in the end, God said. God knows how to deal with evil people like the Babylonians. He promised Habakkuk that the people's captivity in Babylon wouldn't last forever. God was going to bring his people back to their land. Habakkuk prayed. People had forgotten about God. They didn't care about sin. They didn't pray. Habakkuk wanted that to change. He wanted people to wake up, to love God and hate sin. You've done so many amazing, powerful things. Please do it again so everyone will know you. Be merciful to us, Habakkuk said. Habakkuk praised God for his power. The Babylonians were going to come and life for the people in Judah would be very hard for a while. But Habakkuk had faith and he would wait for the day when God would rescue his people from the Babylonians. Finally, Habakkuk said, even if the trees and vines do not produce fruit, even if nothing grows in the fields, and even if there are no sheep in the pens and no cattle in the barns, I will be glad because of the Lord. I will rejoice in God who saves. Habakkuk lived at a time when evil seemed to be everywhere. By faith, he trusted God's promise that God would deliver his people. Injustice, violence, and wickedness surround us today, but we can live by faith and trust that Jesus will return to make all things right. Hey, Allie, how you doing? I'm good. How about you? Mm, not so good. My friend's dad doesn't have a job, and he was afraid that meant he wasn't going to be able to celebrate his birthday. But his grandma sent the whole family tickets to Legoland, and he got to bring a friend, and that was me. But then their car broke down yesterday, and we couldn't go. Why God let that happen? Um... I don't know, but Andy, I'm not sure we're supposed to ask those kinds of questions. What do you mean? Well, you're questioning God and God's all-knowing and all-powerful. He can do anything he wants. I don't think he wants us questioning him. That's what my parents call disrespectful. Oh, I thought we could ask God anything. Really? Without getting into trouble? Yeah, I don't think it's a sin to ask God questions about himself. Are you sure? Well, no, maybe. Mm. We should probably ask Sarah. You want to call her over? Yeah. Sarah. Sarah. Oh, Sarah. Hey, guys. What's up? Well... Andy has a question he'd like to ask. Okay. He wants to know stuff about God. Mm. I told him that I don't think we're supposed to ask questions like that. We're not supposed to doubt him or why he does the stuff the way he does. We're just supposed to go along with it. That's what faith is, right? Well, it sounds like you guys are asking some really big questions. We are? Mm-hmm. You know, I think I know someone who could help us out with this. I think this is a case for Detective Morales. I think we should give him a call. Super Duper Detective Agency, you've reached the office of Detective Morales. Can I help you? Oh, hiya, Sarah. How you doing, sweetheart? Oh, just a minute. Let me see if he's in. Hey, DM, where are you? Phone's for you. It's Sarah. Sounds like she's got another job. Yes, I'll get it, Pickle. Hi, Sarah. How you been? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Hmm. So you want to know if it's all right to question God? Mm-hmm. My investigative team will get right on it. 
Pickles. Yeah. Sounds like we've got a big case. I think we'll call it the case of the inquisitive mind. Oh. Get Mrs. Barrett on the phone. Sure, right away, DM. Record keeping, Mrs. Barrett here. Ah, yes. Mm. Mm hmm. Yes, I will certainly do that, sir. Sir, may I make a suggestion? Start in James 1 5. There's some information there that I think will get you on the right track. In the meantime, I'll keep looking and I'll get back to you as soon as I have more. Thank you, Mrs. Barrett. I'll talk to you soon. Junior detective, I need you. Sir, yes, sir. Reporting for duty, sir. You don't have to salute, junior detective. We're not in the army. Okay, sir. You're a junior detective, and we have a big case. We need to know if it's okay to question God. Now, Mrs. Barrett gave us a Bible reference, James 1, 5. Will you look that up and let us know what it says, please? Sure, yes, sir. We'll do, sir, right away, sir. Got it, sir. It says, if any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. He will give it to you. God gives freely to everyone and doesn't find fault. Great job, junior detective. Now there's something else that's very important that we need to do here. What's that, sir? Context. When we read a Bible verse like this one, we always need to check the context. We need to know who, what, when. You should be writing this down. Where and why. Otherwise, we could misunderstand what the Bible is teaching us. Oh. But sir, who is who and, and, and what is what? And what does where, when, and why have to do with it? <laughs> Slow down, Junior Detective. I'll explain. Context is when we try to understand what the original author meant to say to the original audience he was writing to. So let's begin with who. Who is writing this passage? Well, this is a letter from James, who is a half-brother to Jesus. James of the Church of Jerusalem, and he wrote to all the Jewish people who were scattered among the nations. It says so at the very beginning of the book in the first verse. That's correct. And what is James talking about? He's giving people advice, telling people what to do when they face any kind of trouble. That's what the second verse says. And when did this take place? Well, most Bible scholars believe that the book of James was one of the first New Testament books written. They believe that it was written between 44 AD, the beginning of the Jewish persecution, and 62 AD, James's death. Very good deductive skills, junior detective. Keep going. Well, the where is a bit tricky because this was a letter James wrote to all the scattered Jews. So the information in it must have been passed along from city to city. And the why was because people were feeling the trouble of being persecuted and needed to be encouraged. You are very right. Now let's go back to our verse and see if it answers the question. If any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. James is saying it's okay to ask God questions, right? Right. Now let's read on. He will give it to you. God gives freely to everyone and doesn't find fault. Well, that says God will help us understand and won't get angry with us if we're asking, right? Right again. This is an excellent verse that shows us that God is okay with us asking him questions. Let's add it to the case file. Yes, sir. Super Duper Detective Agency, Pickle speaking. Oh, Mrs. Barrett, it's you. You need to talk to Detective Morales? Sure, darling, let me get him for you. Hey, D! Oh, Mrs. Barrett's on the phone for you, sir. <laughs> yes, Mrs. Barrett, did you find any more clues? Yes, sir, there are lots of clues on this subject. I sent you a fax, can you take a look? First, I found a study on the book of Psalms from the Old Testament that says over one third of the verses in that book are people crying out to God and asking him questions. They seem to ask openly without any kind of punishment. And then there are lots of stories from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John where the disciples are asking Jesus questions. And well, Jesus is God. In fact, one of these disciples had a nickname. He was known as Doubting Thomas. In John 20, 
Thomas asked Jesus to prove that he had really risen from the dead. Jesus took the time to answer Thomas's question by showing him the scars on his hands and his feet. But the biggest proof is Jesus himself. What do you mean? Well, in Matthew 27, when Jesus was dying on the cross and felt the weight of all of our sin and shame upon himself, he asked God, why have you deserted me? You're saying that even Jesus, the Son of God, asked God, his Father, a question, a moment of pain and suffering. Yes, sir, I believe he did. Thank you, Mrs. Barrett. Well, that's proof enough for me. I appreciate your hard work. We have our answer. Pickles, send this case file to Sarah. Right away, DM. This case of the inquisitive mind is closed. That's another case solved for the faith. Wow, what an awesome story that was. But we got an even better story, which you know as our Gospels. Our first color is white. In the beginning, there was just God and everything was perfect. Next, we have black. Sin entered the world, the fall of man, and the wages of sin was death. Next, God sent his son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins, even though he knew no sin. Next, we got a new beginning when Jesus rose from the dead three days later, showing us that we can have new life in Christ. And last, when we decide to choose Christ, then when we die, we get everlasting life in heaven where everything is perfect again. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us this week. But before we all go our separate ways, let's pray together. God, we thank you so much for loving us so much that you would just be in constant communication with us. I thank you that we can always go to you in prayer and ask you questions when we don't know what to do, and you'll give us the answer. I pray that you would just help us connect with you and get to know you through that time of prayer and really connect with you through it. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week, guys.